Hey, what's up guys, Bobo Rail here, and today I'm going to be going over all the changes made to the gunplay and weapon balancing for Vigor Update 11.0. So without further delay, let's jump right into this. I'm going to be going in order from lowest rarity to highest by showing off a bit of footage at various ranges in the firing range. Every gun will be timestamped accordingly and hopefully this should give you a pretty good idea of what has changed and how it will affect their balancing overall. So first up we have the Silver Pigeon. This is from the shotgun category of course and as you can see this is much more accurate than it has been. The spread is very manageable and predictable and it's now rewarding for you to be hitting your shots instead of the old luck of the draw like it was in 10.0. I should say you're not going to be one tapping people at any crazy distances and in the bit of time that I played against Chris with it there seems to be manually added damage fall off just as I suggested in my shotgun overhaul video. I'm really excited to see how this ends up affecting the overall weapon frequency of this but this to me feels really well balanced and it's exactly what I was looking for in terms of change. Next up we have the Mosin. This overall has gotten a pretty drastic increase in accuracy and as you can see here we're now able to get 100% percent accurate while crouched. Now the Mosin wasn't even that bad bloom wise before this but now it's like I can hit a headshot at upwards of 100 meters. That to me is freaking awesome I'm not gonna lie. This just feels like a serious powerhouse now and on top of that I don't know if they've actually sped it up or it's just me feeling like it's smoother but the rechambering animation looks a lot cleaner and I haven't noticed any buggy clipping or anything off with it in the new patch. Now for the last of the plentiful guns, we have a wild surprise that I didn't expect to see changed with this update at all. But the changes made to snipers have affected every gun in the rifle category, which includes the fully automatic M2 carbine. This has had massive adjustments to its recoil and bloom, and as you can see, it's now a very competent full auto rifle. Now this is absolutely nuts, and honestly, this can now comfortably compete with some of the other white and green ARs in the game. That being said, its recoil is still pretty hefty to control while strafing in comparison to the AKs for example, but still I'd say this is a candidate for the close range meta in the next update. Now onto the common guns with the IZH. This was changed in a very similar way to the Pigeon, but with a little bit more extreme tuning. And from when I was using it, it definitely felt more reliable in terms of dealing damage at mid-range. Exactly what I expected and asked for where the Pigeon and this feel very similar, considering they are both long barrel, double barrel shotgun. But this one has a bit more range to compensate for its rarity increase, and it looks like you'll be getting a lot more consistent two-shot kills with it. Overall, feels fantastic, and I love it. Back to the rifle class, we have the SKS, which has also received massive buffs. Honestly, probably the biggest of any gun this patch. To list them, it's been buffed in its accuracy, recoil, and fire rate. Not gonna lie, this is kind of insane. Like, I've been advocating for this gun to get buffed for a long time now, especially in fire rate, but based on this, I think it's a little too good. Now, of course, I'm not dying on that hill by any measure, and before I start hacking into it, I really need to see how it plays in real encounters against other players, but this to me, at first glance, could probably use a bit more recoil, and it'd be pretty good. Also, they seem to have applied the same recoil model of the SA-80's first person onto all the rifles, including those with iron sights which is good for consistency and accuracy sake, but it looks a little clunky and maybe flat on these iron sights guns, so I would look into adding a little bit of shake or bounce to the iron sights when firing to make them look a bit more realistic. On a very similar note, we're now moving on to the only green gun that's been changed with the VZ-52. Now this is another reason why I would support some minor nerfs to the SKS, because right now these two just play so similarly, because this also received accuracy buffs while having a pretty stable recoil and fire rate. Now I'm in favor of this gun's buffs for sure, as the crouched accuracy for both of these is going to make mid and long range combat much more competitive for early game players, but I feel like the two of them have too much roll overlap for this to be picked over the SKS. And on top of that, the sights are still a bit off to the right, which the SKS doesn't have. So I really don't see myself using this next patch over the SKS, but it's still incredibly capable, if not better than it in third person. Now up to the blues. We'll start with our two dinky shotguns, the KS-23 and the Sawed-Off. 
Both of these are rather deceiving as while their bloom doesn't look to have changed much, I'm pretty sure their pellet spread has been decreased pretty significantly. Now keep in mind, I could be way off on this as pellet spread is still pretty random and quite hard to gauge, pun intended, but just from shooting in the firing range, these seem to be a lot more effective than the other two long shotguns in extreme close quarters exclusively, making them trade off any potential range with really strong close quarters capabilities. They still aren't great as they are both short barreled shotguns and secondaries, but the minor adjustments made feel appropriate considering what the other shotguns got. Into the rifles, we have what I call the SS-82, although I've been bullied in the past for calling it that. You already know it's everybody's least favorite bolt action. It's been changed in a very similar way to the Mosin in that crouching now gives you 100% accuracy and strafing is still very little bloom. All the existing bolt actions are now going to be a lot more effective, but whether or not that will actually equate to higher use frequency is still up in the air. Overall, I doubt this will change much with the gun and I still don't think it justifies a blue rarity, but I could be proven wrong and maybe some people will like how it feels now. On to the next blue, we have the M21. And this is the first gun where I think the SA-80 scope changes are going to have a serious effect on it. In first person, this is way easier to land follow-up shots at distance now, but with that, it seems to have come with some changes in third person as well. There looks to be a lot less bloom with a good bit more recoil, and it feels like there's a lot more pressure to hit those headshots if you're shooting in third. This won't change its role in the meta really at all, although it might make it a little bit better at hitting those really long distance shots on Felcanton, whether that be in third or first person aiming. Cruising through this list, we now are on to the purples, where we have the VSS. This was one of the guns I showed off in my update video that had people drooling, because while there has been a little change to its recoil, the scope adjustments make a massive difference on these PSO guns in particular, and combining that with its full auto capabilities and the changes to its ammo stack size, this has some serious potential to be a pretty balanced meta gun. Although I should mention, it's still pretty heavily bottlenecked by its bullet velocity and mag size. Either way, I think this looks and feels fantastic and has had some of the best buffs of the entire update. So I assume we'll be seeing a lot more of these this patch. I'm going to quickly get the ZAM76 out of the way because hardly anything has changed. Maybe a little easier to control recoil, but the only major difference is that it also has the scope changes. So follow up shots will be a lot easier and sniping with it will be a lot nicer. That's pretty much it though and I don't see this getting any change in its use frequency. Now for the big game contender, we have the H-Bar, which is the gun that will probably benefit the most from these adjustments to scopes. But with that, there's been some serious tweaks to its recoil, and it now kicks pretty hard, which I think was a necessary counter, because with the old prone recoil plus these scope changes, you could have easily lasered people at upwards of 150 meters, while the recoil now is pretty much heavy enough to counter that. I still think it's a top tier gun that's just been balanced to damn near perfection, and it serves its purpose as a long range DMR in single fire, while making it a little bit more punishing to use in auto, really discouraging rushing quarters in CQB, and encouraging long range slower shot pacing. This is exactly what the gun should be used for, and I think it's right where it needs to be now. I should also take a moment now to say that the AUR and the AUR Para have not yet received scope adjustments. Not sure if that was a balancing choice by design, or if the devs are just waiting to see what happens with this first round of changes to see if the community supports it. But I wouldn't be surprised if this comes in 11.1 .1 or season 12. Next, we have the SG-1, which I noticed very little to no change in third person recoil or bloom, but it now has the scope changes, so the SG has overall just received a net buff. I think this is still a very well balanced rifle, but man, it's going to be an absolute beam if the person behind it knows how to control its recoil. I really like it, and I think it's another competitor for a really well balanced meta next patch. The last purple gun is the Lashiev or the Spaz-12. This seems like it's received a good bit of the other shotgun buffs, but once again has a relatively deceiving bloom, as the spread of the pellets is a good bit better than they were last patch, but overall it still plays pretty similarly. Although I'm pretty sure it's had a slight fire rate decrease, and while it might be a bit more useful in CQB, it feels just like a slightly less accurate version of the Remington 870, which I'm fine with. 
and really this does still feel like a buff overall and I wouldn't be surprised if we see a few more people using it. Finally we're on to the golds and that's just two guns the SVD and the SVU because I tried the Parker hail and it might have had a bit of an accuracy increase but it was already the most accurate gun in the game so it literally made no difference to me. The SVD has of course benefited from the scope changes but also got an increase in recoil and a slight reduction to fire rate. It's a couple very minor changes that will make it play pretty similar to the old one but actually to me it feels like a slight nerf overall which honestly I think it deserved. If you use the SVD a lot currently, then I'm sure you know shit has literally zero recoil in third right now. Like, none. And for 7.62x54, that's kind of just wrong. Now, it still has great bullet velocity though, and with the scope changes, it seems like it'll keep its title as the best long range sniper in the game. Onto the last and probably most important gun in the game, we have the SVU which of course also receives scope changes, but on top of that has had a pretty sizable increase to recoil and a buff to third person accuracy. This is another one where it's hard to say, but I think it's recoil is enough to call it an overall nerf to the gun, but it just really feels a lot better in terms of balancing in comparison to what it was in 10.0. Like, I think it's pretty safe to say that the SVU was the definitive meta last patch, albeit a still pretty balanced one, but I was okay with that for the most part. Now it feels just like a real SVU would. Really punchy 7.62 recoil, but incredibly accurate as a result. And by the way, I think I messed with its sound design a bit, because it sounds a lot nicer now and has a little bit more bass to it. I really like where this has landed and it's still probably going to be a meta contender, but it's a lot more fair now and I would argue it's much more satisfying to use overall. So that's it. That's all the changes that have been made to guns in 11.0. This is one of the most revolutionary balancing patches in the game's history, and I'm pretty confident in saying that's for the better. Although I do think they went a little bit overboard on the SKS and M2, but the whole game just feels like rifles and shotguns are exactly where they need to be. The last little changes I would like to see would be buffs to 45 ACP and Makarov, and then the scope adjustments being applied to the AUR and AUR Para. But that's really it for me to be 100% content with the game's balance. So no more whiny videos, and I'll be able to focus more on the content I actually want to make instead of constantly trying to fix the game's gunplay. Anyways, that's all I've got for you guys today. This has been Bobo Rail from the Christopher Beast channel, and I'll catch you all in the next one.